I want to talk real quick about a Christless view of discipleship. Um, our Christless Christianity. You know, the whole point, and the whole point that I emphasize again and again and again, is that salvation is realized in the presence of Christ. And when the, when the apostles preached the gospel in Acts, they did not preach, you will go to heaven when you die. They preached, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's consistent through the whole, all the epistles too. Galatians talks about how uh, Jesus became a curse for us, right? So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through faith that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, the whole point of, of the whole thing is that God in Christ, as the Spirit, wants to manifest himself to you. And we, uh, John really tells you that if you continue in my word, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free, right? Uh, and you'll be my disciples. And uh, in John 14, it says, if you keep my word or treasure my word, uh, my father will come to you and I will come to you and manifest myself to you and make my abode with you. That's not for heaven. That is for now. The realization, the reality of the Christian life is when God manifests himself to you. Without the manifestation of Christ, there is no discipleship. There is no sanctification. There is no reality. You have a Christless Christianity. It doesn't mean you're not saved, but we are pursuing Christ to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. And being conformed to his death means I'm growing in the knowledge of my position in his death and I'm learning to forget everything which is behind and stretch forward to that which is before. And I'm pursuing the excellency, the knowledge of Christ. That's all from Philippians 3, right? Uh, Paul talks about, this shall turn out to my salvation through your petition of the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That as always, so even now, with all boldness, Christ will be manifested in my body. What is salvation? Salvation ultimately, yes, brings you into eternity as a glorified son of God. But salvation in the present tense, the salvation that we're working out, is the manifestation of Christ. Christ magnified in my body. It's not, that is what is missing from most people's view of discipleship. It is a Christless view of discipleship. And if you don't have the manifestation of Christ then again, you're in the holiest, the holy place or you're in the wilderness. If you want to use Hebrews as the example. Hebrews is the best explanation that gives the best pictures of this. I strongly recommend getting into the book of Hebrews. I can't get out of the book of Hebrews this year, it seems. <laughs> uh, but as long as you don't have, if you're not interacting with the presence of Christ himself, it's because, according to Hebrews, of unbelief. The goal of salvation is that you would be a partaker of Christ, according to Hebrews. That is the heavenly calling. And the only way is to continue relating to him in faith with an acknowledgement of what he is in you, what the Bible says he is in you. The mystery of the Christian life is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And this is what the enemy blinds our minds to and veils our hearts to. As long as you are viewing the Bible as a list of things for you to do in order to be a disciple, you're reading it according to the letter, according to 2 Corinthians 3, and there's a veil on your heart keeping you from seeing the glory of God shining in the face of Jesus Christ in your heart. And it's only when the heart is turned to the Lord himself that the veil is removed. When you read the Bible, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, it's not being a disciple of Jesus, the man on earth. It's being a disciple of 
Jesus the Christ, the ascended one, who sat down at the right hand of God after he purified your sins and has become a life-giving spirit and has sent his spirit into your heart, the spirit of sonship, crying, Abba, Father, and has installed his spirit in your spirit, joined your spirit to his spirit so that you are he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And now that Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, and the spirit is life because of righteousness. Something happened to your spirit. Christ moved in. He's there now as a source of life. As a source of the Christian life. He is the Christian life. Without the supply of the spirit, there is no Christian life. So a lot of people are talking about discipleship, but it's a Christless discipleship. And ironically, I only, I, I'm not a focus on evangelical truths. I use the word gospel a lot because the gospel is the means for the whole Christian life because it presents the person and work of Christ to me for me to hear by faith and be supplied with him by the spirit because the word is Christ the very declaration of who he is and what he has accomplished is Christ. It's the power of God into salvation. Not just the initial regeneration, but the sustenance of the Christian life. Um, and so my channel is primarily growth, truth, uh, discipleship, sanctification, holiness, truth. That's what I focus on, ironically. But... I talk about how it's how God carries it out in reality. So you don't hear me talking about practices. You don't hear me instructing people what to do and warning them that if they don't, they're going to be judged or warning them if they don't, they're going to be disciplined. The law is good if it's used lawfully, knowing that it's not for the righteous, but for the ungodly and the sinner. The law is for the stiff-necked and rebellious who have seared their conscience and are walking in the futility of their mind, alienated from the feeling of the life of God, and they're no longer learning Christ, and they think they're fine. <laughs> uh, it, you know, there are Christians that need a wake-up in that regard. But the ones that come to me, that's not the condition. The ones that come to me are bruised reeds and uh, smoking flax. And the Lord is the physician, you know, to heal. So anyway, um, one of the things about the confusion over backloaded works messages versus discipleship is that if you have a works, a Christless, crossless, spiritless uh, definition of what discipleship is, then you won't detect a backloaded gospel very easily because it sounds the same. You're always just talking about discipleship. Discipleship, we think of it in terms of how Jesus presented it in the three synoptic gospels before he went to the cross. And we try to apply those concepts as if we need to take up our cross and follow the earthly Jesus. But where he went, he can, we cannot follow. That was the whole point, is eventually he kept trying to show his disciples, look, you want to be my disciple, but where I'm going, you can't follow. Where is he going? Death and resurrection. I've got to go and then come and receive you to myself. Incidentally, John 14 is not talking about the rapture and heaven. It's talking about the manifestation of the Spirit at the time of his resurrection. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and I in you, and you in me. It is talking about the organic union that's established at regeneration when he sends the Spirit, which is him coming and receiving him, receiving us to himself. That where he is, we may also be. Where is he in the Father? Where are you right now? If you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, not on the earth beneath, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ is manifested, then you will be manifested with him in glory. Again, the Christian life is the manifestation of Christ. Mystery of godliness, first, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. Great is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh. It is a person. 
Godliness is a person. Discipleship is a person. The Christian life is a person. Who is the spirit today in you? Christ is in you. That's what we focus on. That's what we want to learn. What does it mean that Christ is in me? Don't talk about discipleship and not talk about Christ in me. You don't have a discipleship. You just have religion. Doesn't mean you're not saved, but we're not going to speak the same language. Uh, These truths are related to the mystery of Christ and they're hidden from the natural mind. We've got to get out of our natural mind and open ourselves up to what the word tells us about who Christ is in us. All right, take care.